I hope you're ready to nerd out because I'm very excited to talk about today's episode. If you watched the previous video that I uploaded about Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, I mentioned a thing called Motor City Nightmares. That's a horror movie convention. Now, I just went, so I'm excited to talk about how this year went. <laughs> Now I'm considering this a shining the light on video because I've actually met a couple people who've never heard of this convention and who are big horror movie fans and would love to go. Now I'm also one of those people. I didn't find out about it until a co-worker told me and he actually happens to also work there as a seasonal job. So I enjoyed it so much last year. Last year was my first year and I loved it so much. I was able to meet people such as Tom Atkins, and if you don't know him, he's from Halloween 3, he's from, uh, he's actually the dad uh, from the daughter in Lethal Weapon, and, and, uh, and one of my personal favorites, Night of the Creeps. I took my brother with me, and he's an even bigger horror movie fan than I am. So, we met Lloyd Kaufman, and I actually didn't know Lloyd Kaufman until my brother mentioned it to me. And he told me that he's part of the trauma movies, which if you don't know trauma movies, they're probably one of the cringiest, low budget, but also like most like, gory, best, the like, B-list movie you could ever watch of a horror movie genre. And so you have like movies like Toxic Avenger, Class of Newcomb High, just, for the people that know they go, oh yes, I know those movies. I also got to meet Tom Savini, which he's most famous for his makeup work in Friday the 13th, the original Dawn of the Dead. Um, I personally love him doing the remake of uh, the Night of the Living Dead series. And you also might know him as Sex Machine from, from Dust Till Dawn, which is probably like such an awesome character. And uh, most importantly, um, the man himself, George Romero. I got to have a photo with him. I had him sign my Night of the Living Dead poster right here along with Tom Savini. And he was just, he was just awesome to meet. Now, um, the first thing that I said to him, I actually told him, if you didn't know, George Romero wrote the original uh, script for the Resident Evil movie. Um, he actually directed the Resident Evil 2 uh, commercial uh, for the game's release. And so they, Capcom felt, uh, all right, let's have him actually give us a script to make a movie about it. Uh, and they actually turned him down, uh, obviously, because now we know it as the the horrendous, you know, Resident Evil movie franchise. So it, it's it still grinds my gears because to think how awesome it is. And if you ever want to read the script, um, there's online PDF files. Um, you can read what the Resident Evil movie could have been. Uh, way much better. So I told him oh, Capcom was dumb for shutting it down, and he told me that. Um, he told me, he's like, ah, he's like, they ended up buying, um, he's, he said they ended up selling the, right, the script or buying the script from uh, some German movie company. He's like, he's like, it was kind of like, basically saying it was all about money. And uh, obviously that company was, uh, I believe, Consonant Team Films. That was actually the ones that made the Resident Evil movies we know today. So that Night of the Living Dead poster that I had signed, I actually already owned that and I brought it for them to get signed. Now there's plenty of vendor booths where you can buy some really cool stuff. For instance, last year I got this cool Hellraiser shirt that says, we got such sights to show you. So I thought this was a really cool t-shirt. My brother also got, uh, I believe he got an eraser head shirt. And come and check this out. This is a Dead Alive light switch cover. I instantly, I took it off. I took off the old light switch cover in this back room that we have, that we had our projector in to watch old movies. And I instantly put this over. I thought this was the coolest thing. Just to have the cover of one of my favorite zombie movies and then just put the light switch cover over that. And if you haven't seen Dead Alive, I definitely recommend it. If you love, It's probably one of the bloodiest, goriest movies you'll ever see. But it's not it's too serious. It has this nice 1950s uh, look to it in New Zealand. And it has this funny, like, uh, Looney Tunes type of humor. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that uh, during sometime during Halloween when I'm doing a bunch of scary movies. I'll probably end up doing... So my brother ended up not going this year, which is kind of a shock to me. He saw some of the people and realized it's not worth going, and which is kind of a surprise to me because he's a bigger horror movie fan than I am. And so I think it was, I, I was kind of on the edge at first, 
But then after seeing some people over time, I realized, okay, I have to go. Like, seeing some of the roster of some of these people, I'm like, okay, it's just that one big person as, like, George freaking Romero. But just this accumulation of all these other people, I'm like, it's definitely worth going. So this year, I brought my girlfriend Lisa with me. Now, I am going to talk about some of the people that came, but just in a few. Right, first, I want to talk about some of the stuff that I got. Now, one thing that I got is some buttons. Um, you probably not see it from here, but I got some buttons. Uh, Return of the Living Dead, uh, more brains. Um, that's because I love Return of the Living Dead. Uh, I got the Mars, one of the aliens from Mars Attack. I love that movie too. As funny as that is, uh, it was uh, this year was the 10 year anniversary of Motor City Nightmares, and uh, the Silver Shamrock, which I thought was the coolest one. Some vendor had um, a bunch of like little buttons like this, and one of them was the Silver Shamrock from uh, Halloween 3. And now on my beanie, if you look at my beanie, I actually put it on the back the back the very back of my neck where the beanie is because if you watch Halloween 3 that that's where they have it on the masks and it's like the little it's a little like metal that keeps the the magic form for the masks now I also got some what have we got in here <laughs> I also got some uh, magnets um, this one vendor had a whole I wish I, sh I should have took pictures but I'll make sure next year that I will um, they ended up having, I wonder if these work on the front. Nope, no they don't. Um, he had a whole corner, and it was just tall. It was just super tall with just magnets. And basically, anything that you were a fan of, there was magnets for it. So, <laughs> so um, I ended up getting, there was a lot of movie covers. Um, I ended up getting, like I said, Return of the Living Dead. It's like, oh, it's one of my favorite zombie movies. Um, it's not my absolute favorite, but it, it is definitely up there. And then he had some old NES Super Nintendo uh, like box covers, and uh, one of them was Burger Time because I remember playing a lot of Burger Time as a kid, even though how freaking hard that game is. Now and then, the last thing that I really bought uh, was a movie. I felt like I needed to buy a movie. Um, I might do a video on this. It depends on how strongly I feel I should do other videos of. But this one was called. Um, let me try to get out of the light. Uh, brain damage. Um, this case is really cool. I mean, it's like dice and silver and uh, got a like chrome look to it. Um, the guy had a couple of the movies that I recognized, but I haven't seen. Uh, one of them was Curtains. And now I've seen trailers of it somehow. I don't remember how I saw trailers of it. But Curtains looked really creepy and it looked like a, like a really creepy slasher movie. Now out of this movie, um, what, when I saw some of the gore um, that's on the on the back of it and some of the descriptions um, it kind of went back to me of of, of uh, Dead Alive and I really love the gore in Dead Alive and the practical effects so I kind of excuse me so I kind of got this more of a gore factor and I was like oh okay uh, and, it, and I watched it and it really was kind of hard to describe between some kind of the like the 80s comedy along with like cartoonish comedy along with the seriousness and the symbolism that it has along with the gore it's really it's really hard to describe but I really enjoyed it and it's kind of hard maybe to explain why I enjoyed it but so maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll do a video specifically on that so now to talk about some of the things that I have signed to kind of give you a hint to some of the people that were there. Uh, one of the first things that I wanted to show is uh, Daniel Harris's signature. Daniel Harris, if you might not know, is the little girl in the Halloween 4 and 5 movies. Um, the only other things that I've really seen her in is the Halloween remake. She did a cameo. or It was, wasn't really a cameo, but it was like a nice kind of nod to the old to the fact that she's part of the Halloween series that she played the younger Annie in the Halloween remakes um, from uh, uh, Rob Zombies and the only other thing I've seen her in is that my uh, Lisa is a big fan of Roseanne and she actually was in a couple Roseanne episodes and we asked her if she enjoyed it and she said yes she was kind of short about it but you know people complain about celebrities being assholes but to me they got every right honestly with you know the being um, the popularity and everything I feel like they have every right to be 
but she signed this and uh, it was cool that she uh, wrote her name along with it and uh, I figured what better way to get signed I already had this thank god Lisa bought me a whole blu-ray box set of the Halloween series so where I still I knew there was a reason why I kept my original DVDs um because I have all of them on regular DVD and all of them on the Blu-ray box set, so I'm glad that I kept this so that way she was able to sign this. Now, the other thing that I got signed was for my mom. She happens to really love one of her favorite horror films, along with, like, a bunch of other, like, Rosemary's Baby, The Thing, she watches a bunch of times. But, like, somewhere in the middle of the that list of movies that she watches, like, a million times, one of them is The Hills Have Eyes. Now, who I for completely forgot until she mentioned it, D. Wallace was in Hills Have Eyes. Most people got signatures for Cujo, mostly for uh, E.T. or, what am I trying to think of? E.T. or, oh, The Halloween. But my mom really loves Hills Have Eyes, and I was, I was like, oh yeah, she is in that movie. And Dee was one of the nicest people ever. She was like a really nice uh, friend's like grandma or something like that. She was really sweet. And I, I, met, and I asked her, because I heard in the filming of Cujo that it was actually pretty cold. It was actually pretty like freezing in the set of Cujo, as much as they looked sweaty. I think it was filmed just just like early spring I think or late fall during Northern California and she said yes it was like very cold she said it was very freezing she said that it was hard to keep warm and lastly the, th the last thing that I got signed was um, this is a rarity I didn't realize till after the fact that this is pretty rare my mom found this at a uh, a garage sale she said she was, I think this was about the mid-90s, I think she bought it. She found this at a garage sale, probably with a whole collection of other books. And she got it for a buck. Um, somebody, the guy that told her about Motor City Nightmares said that if this is the right book, this is actually worth quite a bit of money. So looking online, I've seen it go up to almost $400. Um, I think it's this edition that goes up to $400. There's another edition where it's the actual movie cover that I think came out later. But this random figure with a jack-o'-lantern helmet, or what it, the jack-o'-lantern had, or whatever it is, I don't know how they took a picture of this. But this is actually worth quite a bit of money. It, it's, it's a little dinged up. Um, because as a kid, I read this, and it didn't really... <laughs> You know, I it really didn't dawn upon me that this was really that rare. And um, what's really cool about this, there's actually some deleted scenes that were cut from the movie. Because actually, this is based off the script just as much as the movie's based off the script. So it's almost like these were made at the same time. So this isn't really based off the movie, it's just as much of the script as the movie is. But the movie was cut out for more. This kept everything. So this has the beginning scene, this has like uh, just scenes where Michael was at uh, the Smith's Grove going through trial. And one of the things I think is most interesting is the just the very beginning. You As soon as you read the beginning, you realize, wow, this is not like the movie. Because it actually starts off with Michael being a young kid. He's six. This is a couple weeks before he murdered his sister. That she starts to tell, his grandma starts to tell him about this story in Ireland and the start of Halloween and it's it's really creepy and so for all the big fans of Halloween I recommend reading this um you can probably get like a pdf file maybe if you look online or maybe you can get uh I think they redid it or did something about it they kind of remade this to like a little version but this is so cool that I had this so as soon as I saw the fact that PJ Souls was going to be in here I made sure to get her to sign this and it was so awesome that she was able to. Now, Nancy Loomis was there. And I'm so mad at myself for not getting her signature. Because I forgot to look for her. I got so sidetracked at all the people and all the things that I was looking at. That I completely left and forgot about getting Nancy Loomis's signature. Because Nancy Loomis plays Linda in it. Or, I'm sorry, not Linda. She plays Annie in it. And it would have been so awesome to get her signature in that. And I just, I'm so mad at myself. So, I'm just... Fingers crossed that she's probably there next year. So I'm going to also mention the other people that were there. 
that I I may not have got signatures from, but I at least mention them or kind of show you how many people are actually the celebrities are actually there. Um, one of the people that one of the local people that I was excited about was the boss James from the show David Chuck the Freak. If you live in the Metro Detroit area, you probably know about David Chuck the Freak. It's basically the free beer and hot wings or the the morning talk show of 101.1 WRIF, the Riff, the radio, the rock radio station. And these guys are hilarious. Maybe I'll do a, I'm thinking about doing a podcast, trying the light on, and one of those guys are one of the main people that I listen to because they're freaking hilarious. Now, James isn't really a part of the show, but he kind of is. He has his own booth. And every now and then he'll mention something, he'll join conversations with the David Chucks and um, with, uh, Andy and uh, Lisa that are all in their own booth. But he has his own separate booth from them. Sometimes he adds in and he's pretty freaking hilarious. And the radio station happened to be there, or he was part of the radio station. He had his own booth to win prizes and stuff. And I talked to him and he's hilarious. Now, a recurring person from last year is Sid Haig, which is the well-known Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corpses. And uh, if you're a big Walking Dead fan, Xander Berkeley and Pollyanna McIntosh, um, also known as Gregory and Jadis from The Walking Dead, is mostly what those two are famous for, and they had their own booth, and they were awesome. Now, I actually forgot that Xander Berkeley was actually the dad, or the stepdad in... Um, Terminator 2 and had that like famous um, that milk carton death and I was like I, I, I didn't realize that until I got there and I was like oh yeah you were in that movie I'm like that's awesome and uh, um, some of the other people that were also there was uh, one of my personal favorites is uh, Curtis Armstrong um, Curtis Armstrong is mostly famous for two roles most famously Booger from Re uh, Revenge of the Nerds and if you're a big Supernatural fan which I'm not, I've never seen it, but uh, Metatron. Um, I, however, know him from the Dan Harmon podcast, Harmon Town. I'm not going to get into details, but he's been on a couple episodes. He hasn't been on recently. And so I, I asked him recent, um, why he hasn't been on recently. I said, if it's a personal thing, I totally understand. And he said that's kind of what it was. He said he... Um, so if, if you're a big Harmon Town fan and you're wondering why he's not there, uh, from what he told me... He said that it's sometimes hard to get on the show, um, not because of other guests, but because it's on a Sunday. He said he, he's usually not in town to drive out to LA, and especially on a Sunday, he's got stuff during the week. Um, so that, I told him, I was like, dude, I completely understand. And I asked him if he had a lot of fun, and he, he said, yeah, he said he had a lot of fun on the show. For the couple other people there, uh, I forgot Lita Ford was there. I didn't really stop and ask her. I just, I, I walked past and I saw her. Uh, Linda Blair, also known as uh, the girl from The Exorcist. Um, I was thinking about getting a signature from her, but she had a really long line. Uh, same thing with uh, Nancy Lagenkamp from, I think that's how you pronounce her last name, from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I thought that was really cool when she was there. And I was like, oh yeah, I can get an autograph from her. Um, and she ended up having a long line as well. The, uh, the two lines actually kind of merged between her and Linda Blair, and I was like kind of claustrophobic at that point and then the biggest person out of there was Malcolm McDowell he was kind of like the George Romero of there uh, but you know what I I've seen Clockwork Orange and it's kind of wasn't I don't hate it but it's not something I'm a huge fan of um, and I, he was in the Halloween 1 and 2 but I, out of the cash that I have I don't think his autograph was worth it me personally um, but it was, but it was really awesome the fact that he was there, and I mean, it's just, it's awesome. And uh, um, Eugene Clark was another person that was there too, uh, which he's the only thing he's done is with the gas attendant, um, Big Big Daddy from Land of the Dead. When you think of Land of the Dead, that's the first thing you think of is is his character. Now the coolest part about him being there was the fact that he was in costume. And I thought that was awesome. And looking back, I, I should have asked for at least a picture. Because that would have been awesome. But I, like I said, I, I guess I rushed it when I was there. Because um, mostly because I wanted to get a signature from PJ Souls and uh, D. Wallace. But at the time, they had to go do a booth, um, a photo op booth. 
and then so I had to wait another 30 minutes so I was kind of like already doing what I, things I was already doing and then when I finally came back I was like alright let me get an autograph and then leave and uh, so I'm, I kind of kicked myself in the butt a little bit from that uh, there's a couple other celebrities other than what I just mentioned I mean there was a crap ton but um, I'm not going to go over it. Uh, I, can't send a, I can send a link to the website so that way you can scroll through the list of the people that were there if, in case you're curious. Or just for future reference um, in case, you know, less than a year from now and then they start opening up the roster for next year. You can see, you can check out that out to where who else is coming for next year. So that way you can kind of see uh, how cool some of the celebrities are. I mean, there were so many that I, I don't think I have time to mention all the people that have been in one or two things um because some because some of these people i shot it out somebody instantly knows what i'm talking about others are like i don't even know what movie or whatever you're talking about um so here's the cool photo that i want to add real quick this is lisa and i standing in front of a original piece set from evil dead 2 it was a screen door and a uh, part of the frame of that from the original set of the second evil dead and it was kind of cool that it was just kind of laying there. I was like, holy crap. I was like, at first I kind of over glanced it and there was a sign on it. And I was like, holy, I was like, holy shit, that's kind of cool. I was like, Lisa, let's take a photo in front of this. And uh, so um, I'm going to actually briefly before I end this, I'm going to add some of the cons. Um, so it is fun, but there are some cons to this. Um, one of them is the um, purchasing. Now, this is the only convention that I've ever been to, so I kind of don't know what it's like, so some of these cons could be a, a common thing, but one of them is the amount of money you're paying, so that could be totally up to your budget, but so you, some of the celebrities, you pay for the autograph, some people go, oh, why do you pay for an autograph? I think it's worth it. You know, it depends on your own budget. Um, some of the celebrities, it depends how much they pay. Some do it for free. I know Lloyd Kaufman had it for free along with the photo. Um, some people, like PJ Souls, it was $20 flat for the photo and an autograph. So you got an autograph along with the photo. Some just gave away free photos. I know um, Sid Haig had a free photo, but I did not get an autograph from him. Um, and then, like Daniel Harris, she charged a charge for a picture, a charge with an autograph, and then charge for an autograph and a picture together. So, so it kind of depends on the celebrity. Not to mention, you're already paying to get tickets to get in. It's twenty dollars on Friday and Sunday, but thirty dollars on Saturday. So, for the money that I paid, I kind of paid for what I wanted. It's kind of what you get. So what you get is kind of what you pay for, and I enjoy it so much that I kind of think it's worth it. But from some of the other people that might not have money, I can see where it can be a problem with them. Now another thing that I would like to also add is that, like I said, it, this could also be other conventions, but it, it was kind of crowded in there. Um, to where it was really claustrophobic, or if you're standing in front of a booth, it was really hard for other people to walk along with the other people standing on the other side of the booth from the, the ones that are facing the other booths. So, I don't know if they can maybe find a way to space it out or some of the other things. Um, going through the vendor booths was kind of not as bad, but where it got really bad was the celebrity booths. I feel like it wasn't set up too well, and it should maybe could have been a little organized for some of the lines, because I couldn't tell if some people were just standing there to walk, to wait for people to pass and then walk or if they were just standing in line to go with another celebrity, or their line, like I said, some of their lines just crossed over, so people had to ask, hey, are you in line for so-and-so, or are you in line for you know another person? So, it, it worked out, but I feel like it could be a little more, more set and organized to make everybody be as calm and in and out as possible. Now, I didn't have this problem last year, and I think it's because Bruno and I went on a Friday, and this year I went on a Saturday, but the parking spaces. Now it's a hotel, so I feel bad for the people that are checked in for the hotel, unless there's a, a different side of the parking lot. But it was hard to find a parking space, and thank God there was a Best Buy right next door that was part of the, the road that led to it. So we ended up parking to the Best Buy, and then walked next right over. And it wasn't that far of a walk compared to like going to a parking garage or you know most stuff like that. 
but it was very it felt very claustrophobic in there and so like like um when i went last year i, I instantly was in the parking lot i didn't even have to look for a space both times that i came back to go park there um but i mean that's that's nothing like they, they can handle um maybe they can find some way to park somewhere else i don't know um that, I, like i said these are just minor things um because i really enjoyed it and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to next year. I can't wait to see the next people that are coming next year. And if you ever have a chance, to, if you happen to be in the area of Novi, in the Detroit area, uh, and you love horror movies, I definitely recommend going. Because I, it's, it's this new, I love that it's a part of my new tradition. And hopefully it can be part of your tradition too.